Hi, welcome to Solid Edge ST7 video tutorial. I want to do a sort of skelet sketch modeling which I did before in the other programs now in Solid Edge. Uh, therefore, I have already created an assembly which I called a C skelet sketch model. Now I need a part, create a part in place, OK, confirm, and save it as sketch. In the sketch part now, I make a sketch. So, cover sketch. Um, the top plane. And then I need some circles. First one. Second one. One. Give it some dimensions. This could be 50. That one could be 30. This one 40. And the smaller one maybe 20. Now let's align these. Distance maybe 100. Add two more lines to the sketch like this and like that. Make them tangent. And trim it. Okay. Now let's leave the sketch. And I need some named user parameters. Therefore, I go to Tools. Levels, and I could rename these or I could define some new ones. So I will define some new. First, I call point one, which should be 30 millimeter. Next one should be point two, which must be 50 millimeter. Next one, center one. 20 millimeters, one center, two, 30 millimeters, one core connector length, which might be 100 millimeter, and one square depth. And this should be. Another one, plane one, ten millimeters, and another one, plane two, twenty millimeters. Same process which I did in the other programs. Now I need for these a formula. Let me move this a little bit down. And okay, so. This should equal, uh, that's the whole two. Next one should equal, uh, that's the center one, center two. Center two. Next one should equal hold. One and this one should equal center one and 
this should be connector length. Okay. Now I want to tear off these circles and the connector into three new sketches. So I'll go for tear off. I have to select a plane, take the top plane, and I will take this circle and confirm it. Then again, the top plane, and this circle, confirm it, and Again, the top plane and this element. And OK. Now I've got four sketches which are linked to the original sketch. And next step would be to copy these sketches into new parts. So I will close this one. And I need three new parts in my assembly. So I go to create part in place. Check just these options, OK, confirm, and we'll call this one called one cut part. The next would be called two part, so not cut part, but part, and another one which I call connector part. OK, fine. Now I have to copy the sketches into these parts. Now I want to copy my linked sketches into the other parts. So I switch to the part, to my sketch part, go to copy, and oh, first I want to copy this one. Just wait, press right mouse button. I want to have the sketch 2. Copy it, select one or more target files in assembly, and do my whole one part. And link it to the file. OK. Next, I want to copy a sketch 3 into hold to part. Okay. And last but not least, I want to copy sketch four into the connector part. Okay. Close and return. All these are connected. So I go to this part and to this one and this one and I will create the extrusions. Now I want to use two planes to control the extrusions. In order to work, make sure that the solid edge options, the interpart options, are activated. Okay, to look, all of them are activated. And I'll confirm this. And now I want to create two parallel planes in my assembly. So go for parallel one to the top one. The first one should be 10 millimeters and the second one should be 20 millimeters. Okay. Now let's go to the one part. I want to make an extrusion with that sketch up to this plane. That's possible. So go for extrude, choose the sketch, confirm it, and then press shift and select that plane. See, it goes up to this plane. Confirm this one. Now I want to mirror this. I want to mirror this, but Um, 
this plane. Return. Same with hold two part. Make an extrude with that sketch. Press shift and click that plane. Okay. Confirm. Then mirror it. And with this feature. with this plane. Confirm. Go back. And next, the connector part. Make an extrude with this sketch. Confirm. And this should be symmetric. And it should be Confirm. Close and return. Now I've created my parts. Now I have to make sure that my variables, my parameters, can control this whole assembly. Therefore, I have to connect my variables from part to part somehow. Let's check. Go to peer variables and select the sketch part. Now I want to link this parameter. So I go there, right click, copy link, close this one, okay, go to peer variables and select the connector, go right here and paste link. Close it. Now I should be able with the peer variables of this part the depth here to control the depth. So I make it let's say 5 and it works. Back to 10. Okay, nice. If I change the center and move this one to 10, yes. Connected, yes. And maybe this one to 60. Works. One small problem. I could connect the planes to the parameter, but there is a little but. So let's go to P variables, let's sketch part and Copy this one, copy link, go to the variables and paste link. Okay, and again, copy the second value as well by copy link, go to the variables of the assembly and paste the link. Now I can control the planes but the extrusions will not update. That's the small problem. So go to the rebels, sketchboard. Let's see if I change this value. No, let's take this use plane to 30. The plane moves up, yes, but sadly the extrusion doesn't. That's odd, but it's like it is, so I would have to go to the hold two part, to the protrusion, the definition. And go to the 
a step and by shift clicking the other plane I could make a manual update. So I found no other way to do it. So maybe you could put the planes into the according parts because with the p variables and the copper link method you could connect the planes to the parameters in the sketch part. So hope you enjoyed this video as well and what's missing I will try to do this in Creo and in SolidWorks. Okay, see you to the next one. Bye bye. Thank you.